I'm Michelle Bouchard. I run Health Corp for Dr. Oz and Corp. And I want to turn the mic over to our founder now, who's the head of uh, the vice chair of cardiac surgery at Columbia Presbyterian. Y'all may know him best, though, from the Oprah Winfrey Show, where he's a health expert, and he's about to have his own show. Here's the great Mr. Oz, Dr. All of you gathering around, I'm going to talk a tiny bit about Service Nation, what it means, what it's about, why it's important to all of us. Uh, I'm also going to talk a bit about Health Corps because they're interrelated. Uh, but I, you know, we think our kids, it's so hard to get them to go to church that we actually just do it at home. And because I can rope them into one room and talk to them. So the story this week was about the Tower of Babel. Uh, as ironic as it might appear, a highly technologically advanced society that aims to build edifices to the sky who are going in the wrong direction may not be as well off as a society that's broken down to, to many different languages that have to find commonality and seek the, 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 the true reality, which is to bring a spiritual uh, and service-based uh, existence down uh, to this planet, down to earth, down to reality. And that's what Service Nation seeks to do. It's a very simple concept. It's, it's a uh, uh, alignment of about 110 organizations. We're one of them. We happen to be sort of the health part of Service Nation. But it plays a big role in what uh, the new Obama administration seeks to accomplish, uh, which is to create a USA service uh, initiative. What Health Corps represents is a way that, that we try to serve uh, our communities. And it's just an example of one way of doing it. And we started it about five years ago. And the initiative came out of the real, real, realization that there were people coming into my operating room who were 25 years of age who needed heart surgery. In fact, the first person was from the Bronx. And she was a young woman. I had just come back from Washington where I was on a committee uh, Health and Human Services Committee, which I'll come back to in a second, uh, that was trying to find a way of reducing childhood obesity. And I realized after I met this woman that it wasn't going to happen in Washington. We weren't going to legislate this. We were going to have to do this in our communities by ourselves because we were the world experts in our bodies. And the only way to, for us to make this change happen is for the information that we're going to throw out to you today not to stay with you, but for you to take it percolated through the people that you love in your life to share that insight that you just gained so that they can begin to, to, to understand deep down inside what that epiphany really is about how cool their bodies are. Health Corps is also about service. We realized early on, and the city health commissioner, uh, Tom Frieden, and the mayor, they've all emphasized this, and they're absolutely right. It's not just about teaching kids how to eat better. It's about teaching kids mental resilience. Why? Because if you're tough inside, you know how to control your own body, but you can go out and change the community around you. You can go into local bodegas and say, hey guys, you know, these people need to be eating 100% whole grains. You don't have any on your shelf. Bringing local communities in touch with farmer markets so they can get them uh, the produce that's fresh and we know nutritive for the human body. Because when you walk into a grocery store, you're walking into a pharmacy. The foods that you're served are gonna be the ones that nourish you. And that's the important message for the Health Corps volunteers to give back. Uh, what, what I'd like to try to do to, uh, now is introduce um, the other folks who are so passionate about this who have joined us uh, here today. And, and then, uh, to open up a dialogue because there's a desire by the Obama administration, particularly Secretary Daschle, who's the head of uh, Health and Human Services, that same committee that I was speaking at you know, many years ago before Health Corps started, uh, to actually gather ideas. So let me start with Donovan, if I don't mind. Don I met Donovan. And Donovan, come up here for a second. No, so if you see Donovan. So my first thought when I met Donovan was I want to look like Donovan. So I started to work out with Donovan, and I love his passion. Uh, I, I, he's got the right energy, because it's not about building big muscles. Uh, it, it's about developing an inner uh, uh, safe area right, where you allow yourself to grow to what you could become. So give us a little bit of your vision for what you're doing in your life, but also uh, what we can do to make health better in America. Okay. As far as people in this community goes, everyone says, you know, we cannot stand contracts. We don't want a contract from our gym. Uh, we cannot afford fitness, we cannot afford it's too expensive. Well, they can afford it today, because this gym is $5 for the day to use the gym. There's no contracts. It's $55 for the month, no contract. Personal training is $250, yes, I'm advertising. It's $250 for 10 sessions with a trainer. And that's it, no contracts. So people don't have excuses in this neighborhood. All right, so I think one of the points here is inexpensive community-based workout places. Let me introduce uh, Tony Avella. He's uh, a councilman from Queens, thanks for coming up to the Bronx. What I really love the most is uh, that he's really spearheading an effort to bring gyms into the New York school system, trying to get physical fitness back on the radar screen. I'm glad you both said it's not about muscles because, as you can see, I have none. So, and I have all the excuses I can't go to the gym. I had too much work, I don't have the time, it's too far.
But I actually am impressed that you're, oh, you charge $5 a day. I mean, I think that is great. And I think that is the first lesson that we should take away from today, is making it more affordable for people to come and work out. And I remember, uh, for a good part of my time in New York, watching the gentleman to my right, John Starks, uh, but he's been kind enough to help us at Health Corps. I appreciate you very much coming in here. If you could give us a few ideas, your vision for how we can improve health in America. Thank you. I just, say, I just want to thank everybody for coming out and, and being a part of uh, Health Corps and what uh, Health Corps is trying to do uh, to get, obviously, the community out to uh, invest in their health. I remember when I retired from the NBA, I took a big, deep breath and like, <laughs> I'm done, finally. Now I can relax. I don't have to work out as much and this and that. So when I went back home, you know, I'm like everybody else, once you retire, you say you're going to go out and you're going to play golf. So that's what I did. <laughs> I went to go play golf. No <laughs> uh, yeah. So I went to go play golf and I just like relaxed. And I mean, in a year's time, in a year's time, I've played at 190 pounds, between 180 and 190 pounds. In a year's time, I went up to 225. Oh, wow. Uh, I like blew up. <laughs> and I finally got to a point and say, no, I can't let this happen because my heart, my heart started to race at one point in time and I thought I was actually having a heart attack. And so I had to take the initiative to get out and do something. And, and it comes down to that. You know, you can you know, make all the excuses you want and people can tell you, you know, to work out, work out, but unless you take the initiative to do it, then it's not going to get done. When I um, began med school, which was 1982, there was a tune out there uh, that dominated the country. And uh, the person who uh, wrote that, who performed that, uh, is, a, is a Bronx native. It's Melly Mel, a good friend. Because the one thing that Dr. I said that's totally right, every time you walk in the store and you see food, food is drug. So if you was to eat some food right now, then it would make you go, Oh, that's so good. That's not necessarily food. That's drugs. That's chocolate. That's potato chips. Yeah. If, you eat, if you eat a salad, nine times out of ten, you would not do that because it works on your brain, it works on your mentality, and it works on your body better, not, uh, uh, a little differently. So you, so you would just eat it, and you would feel better after you eat it. it and it's especially with inner city kids, it's impossible for you to actually teach a kid to learn with the diets that we all have, being from the inner city, Black people, too much fried food. Italian people, too much pasta. Puerto Ricans, too much rice. Mexicans, too much cheese. So you can understand what I'm saying. Now, you put those kids in a class, it's impossible for them to learn because their diet is not uh, balanced and basic. It's just like most uh, kids and most people here don't even take a multivitamin every day to supplement the vitamins that you don't have in the poor diet that you eat. And everybody here is on a diet. But it's just nine times out of ten is a bad diet. And I want to introduce Step, who probably came the furthest. Where'd you come from today? That's where I thought. From Philly. Uh, he came the furthest today. Uh, I met Step in uh, in Florida, actually. He's one of those guys. Just you'll find out when he speaks. He just steps out and talks to you. I'm a dancer. I'm a choreographer. I dance well. Very well. I don't. Very well. I, 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 but I'm not saying. I'm saying. I'm saying that because those people who think they can't dance. Everybody can dance. That doesn't mean you're a good dancer. But that physical, act, that physical activity of dancing will work for you. Dr. Oz, I did an event for Dr. Oz last season, and um, I got a free membership to a gym. So I went to that gym. I, I, I waited a while because I've been so busy working on shows. I went, and I, the second day I went to that, that gym I got a free membership to, who did I work out with? Barack Obama. Yep. <laughs> Next to me on the treadmill. It's a long, long story. I went to the gym. I got there. I, I did my workout. I went and got a shower. And I heard a rumor in the in the locker room that he was coming and the Secret Service was coming. I put the nasty, sweaty, dirty clothes right back on. <laughs> and I went back out onto that floor and I faked the workout. <laughs> I'm an actor. That's what I do. So I faked the workout. And I'm on the bike, the bike that was by the door, which was broken, by the way. <laughs> and I'm riding, I'm riding, and here comes the Secret Service. I got my little self up off of that bike, and I reached out my hand, and he shook my hand and said hello, and looked me dead in my eye. And then he got, he said, told everyone in the gym, let's not make this an excuse for not working out. He got on the treadmill, 
Well, there just happened to be a treadmill. He was on seven. I got my black butt on eight. And I, and I started running. And I was looking at his numbers. I said, oh, you going to run like that? Okay. So, and so, and this was like, what, five weeks ago. It was, it was really an amazing thing. So you never know who you meet at the gym. So you might want to go.